is the new M3 Max MacBook Pro. It's always a mouthful when I have to say that. Worth the insane price. Let's dig into it. Hey everyone, Philip here. Today we're diving deep into the all new 16 inch MacBook Pro in space black powered by the much anticipated M3 Max chip. Let's see if the hype around this machine lives up to the reality, especially for creators like me. All right, so let's crack this beauty open. Apple didn't exactly reinvent the wheel here design-wise, but this new space black color is something that I didn't know I needed until I saw it with my own eyes. It's not just a darker version of the space gray, but it's almost like a night sky captured in a metallic finish. It's perfect. Seriously, it looks incredible incredible on my desk. Compared to my space gray, the space black makes the space gray look like the silver color. Build quality, as always with Apple, is top notch. Everything feels rock solid, and for my particular MacBook Pro, I haven't found anything wrong with it. Now, let's talk about size. I got the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and I'm coming from the 13-inch. When the new N3 chip MacBook Pros came out, I initially got the 14 inch, but then I decided to try something new and go for that behemoth of a device 16 inch MacBook Pro. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought I was going to be able to travel with this device and I can. But damn, those extra two inches really do make a difference. It weighs as much as a small dog and you could probably like, you know, use it as really expensive dumbbells. But the pro or the advantage to, you know, the extra size and the extra weight is that the screen real estate is amazing. Every time you know, I'm used to the 13 inch, but every time I open up the 16 inch and I see the screen, it is clear as day and night that three inches in size makes a huge difference in the display. If you're a video editor or graphic designer or any kind of creative, the extra screen real estate is going to make a huge difference. However, if you do travel a lot and like to work on the go, I barely could get it to fit inside my usual commuter backpack or bag. Okay, so enough about the outside. Let's talk about under the hood. The liquid Retina XDR display is simply stunning. Supporting HDR, blacks are inky black, colors are like a bag of Skittles exploded on the screen, and the brightness is enough to light up a small room. Editing photos and videos is a joy on this display. Everything looks crisp and clear, almost like you can reach in and touch the photo. Oh, and then I discovered this hidden gem and it's called the 120 Hertz refresh rate. When I bought this computer, I didn't know that it came with 120 Hertz refresh rate until I powered on my MacBook Pro and I started using it. I noticed how buttery smooth the screen was when I was like swiping between pages or scrolling. Um, it kind of gave me a little bit of deja vu to my iPhone 15 Pro Max, which also has 120 Hertz refresh rate. So discovering that this computer came with that uh, was definitely a nice surprise. It was almost like opening a Christmas present on Christmas Eve. But the real star of the show is the M3 Max chip. This thing is an absolute beast. Editing 4K footage in Final Cut Pro, even multiple clips, multi-cam, makes it a breeze. Clayback is buttery smooth and render times are cut in half. Multitasking is a dream on this chip. I can have multiple tabs open, I can have Final Cut open, I can have um, Canva open, I can have, um, you know, all the AIs open as well. And it 
doesn't lag at all. It doesn't even stutter. Honestly, after using this computer since it was released in November of 2023, I don't think I've come near close to pushing it to its limit. Honestly, I feel like I could have gotten away with the M3 Pro chip, which is the one right underneath the M3 Max chip. In addition, I know that I'm barely reaching the limits because I don't even hear the fans kick in. I mean, granted, I am hard of hearing and wearing hearing aids, but still, I do touch the MacBook shelf from time to time, and it gets hardly any warmer than lukewarm water. The computer also has 36 grams. Uh, blah, 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 36 gram. The computer also has 36 gigabytes of RAM, and for the most part, in the activity monitor, it stays green. However, when I am editing a video that has a lot of effects and footage, etc., I noticed the green does shoot up to where it almost turns into orange. Orange means a little warning flag that the memory will soon be or is starting to swap. Not necessarily a bad thing since Apple has become savvy in memory swapping, but if it is constantly swapping or staying in orange for long periods of time, it's no good for your SSD card or your RAM. I was debating on whether I should get the 18 gigabytes or the 36 gigabytes of RAM. And I am for sure glad that I got 36 gigabytes of RAM because I would have been pushing 18 gigabytes of RAM um, into the orange for long periods of time. Now, in my experience, you can ditch that power cord for most of your workday, whether you're editing on location, attending meetings, or just chilling at a coffee shop. No more scrambling for an outlet just when you hit your creative workflow. Battery life will vary depending on what you're doing. If you're pushing the M3 Max to its limits with complex tasks, bunch of multitasking tabs open, applications open, expect the battery to drain faster. But for everyday use like browsing the web, watching videos, working on documents, you should easily get a full day's worth. The M3 Pro and the M3 Max come with three Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI 2.1, MagSafe, and a SD card reader. I'm so glad they brought this back because my old MacBook Pro only had two USB-C ports and I had to bring around an extra dongle to insert my SD card if I want to do anything USB um, connection. but. After this, I can kiss that dongle goodbye. It's one less thing to carry. The MacBook Pro chip can support up to two external displays and the M3 Max can support up to four external displays. It also has an audio output, which I hardly ever use because honestly, I use my AirPods. It's a lot convenient, but for those audiophiles out there who want, you know, who want to plug in those extra fancy headphones, you got the port for it. Okay, benchmarks. We are gonna throw the graphs and the numbers into the trash because honestly, to this day, you know, a lot of people talk about the benchmarks. I don't even understand it. They're just numbers on paper. What we're gonna talk about is real world performance. I mainly use this computer to browse the web, consume social media, watch TV, video edits on Final Cut Pro and research. I use this device every day and it has handled everything smoothly. From multitasking, having multi-tabs open, in addition to having Final Cut Pro running in the background, this computer does not break a sweat. Also for gaming, I don't really do much gaming as I used to in the past. For this computer, I did test out two games. The first one is called Maple Story. I played the game at max settings and the computer was cold. Fans didn't activate, but then again, this computer wasn't really, or this game wasn't really as, you know, it doesn't require much to run it anyways. It handled that game pretty easily. I did try out WoW and I logged into my old account. I turned everything to max settings and shockingly, it ran just fine. There was a little bit like a slight fan noise um, and the shell did get a little warm on the outside, but otherwise, frame rate didn't drop, zero lag, very good overall. Okay, let's talk about the not so fun part and that is the price tag. We're talking 
$500 for a starting price. So who should consider this computer? If you're a casual user or a student who mostly checks emails or browse the webs with multiple tabs open or use it for social media purposes, this is 200% overkill for you. It's like buying a Ferrari just to get to the grocery store. I mean, nothing wrong with that. It will get the job done in style, but it's not the most cost effective at all. And especially because Apple seems to have a spending ladder with all these different add-ons, you know, for $100, $200, or $150, and then you, you know, add them all up, it ends up being like a thousand dollars more than what you initially wanted to pay or budget it at first. So don't fall into that trap. Only buy what you need. Heck, even my eight year old MacBook Pro still runs fine. That thing had an Intel chip and only had eight gigabytes of RAM and it got me through college just fine. You know, I think these new MacBook Pro chips, um, even the baseline Mac chips, you know, will get you through, if you're a casual user, will get you through whatever you need the computer to do just fine. But if you are a creative professional, and I mean, I'm not to say that I am, um, I don't even think I'm pushing this to its limits, but I think if you're a creative professional, like video editors, 3D artists, programmers, um, who need the absolute best performance, then I think this M3 Max MacBook Pro is something that um, should be considered. It's an investment for sure, but it will significantly improve your workflow and save you lots of time. So the big question, is the 16 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro worth it? Well, that depends on your needs and budget. For creative professionals who need the absolute top of the line performance, this is a no brainer. It's an investment that will pay off in terms of productivity and saving time. For casual users such as students, um, there are a lot more cheaper, affordable, more suited toward your needs MacBooks out there. So ultimately the decision is yours, but if you are looking for the most powerful and the most versatile MacBook Pro out there on the market, then the 16 inch MacBook Pro M3 Mac is truly an impressive machine. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about the MacBook Pro or if you're thinking of getting one yourself. Also, if you enjoyed this review, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech adventures. Thanks everyone, see you in the next video, bye.